like a little drip, but thank you. What I've been doing since you've been gone. Peeler on it as well. But it's a little bit to show you some secrets of a pastry chef. I work with the cookies. Sometimes they do crumble. You can stick a fork in it, literally. And that people think it's very hard. You'll find out. It's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tamsel and welcome back to Urban Esque Living. One of the things that makes your dishes special is that you make them your own. And one of the best ways to make your dishes your own is to make your own spice mix. And what you do is you actually pick out your favorite spices, what you like. And I know that I like to bake and I have certain flavors that I really like. So right now what I'm going to do is make Tish's spicy spice mix for my granola, for my cakes. Um, I like to use a variety of different spices. One thing that I love to use is ground vanilla bean. So what I'm going to do is start it off with some ground vanilla bean. I have a little bit of papaya enzyme that I'm going to add and we're doing this in our coffee grinder and the coffee grinder is great for grinding coffee but it's also great for making your own spice mixes so I have some cinnamon I love the taste of cinnamon it actually makes the house smell wonderful while you're cooking I have some coriander aromat now a lot of these spices that I love to use actually come out of Africa and they smell wonderful. Imported spices, but one of the ways to really bring out that flavor is to grind them and then toast them. This is ginger, love ginger. And finally we have some nutmeg. So now that I have all of my desired spices in my spice grinder, I'm simply going to put the top on and pulse it until they got they make a nice little mix. And it doesn't take that long because they're already ground, but you can buy some of these spices still in their whole form. Okay. So, wonderful smell. It smells like something from the Middle East. That's a very urban-esque thing to do to make your meals your own. Grind your own spices at home. Thank you. Nice dad. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who'll take you just as you are. Hi, I'm Chef Tish Tansel, and today I'm going to show you a way to add a lot of flavor to your baked cooking, and that is just by roasting some garlic. Now, there's a couple of ways to roast garlic. One, you can use whole cloves like those that you find in the store, or you can peel these yourself, or you can do it where you have the entire bowl and you just stick it in the oven. And that's actually very easy to do. You just take your paring knife and you're just going to slice the head off of the bowl 
And that's revealing the heads of the garlic. And we're just going to put that bulb of garlic and some aluminum foil, and we're going to pour some olive oil on top of that. And we're just going to take our aluminum foil, wrap that up, and we're good to go. Now, if your bulbs of garlic have already been peeled, you're just going to need a little cast iron skillet or a little glass skillet, whichever you have. And you're just going to put the whole cloves of garlic into your skillet. And you're going to, once again, pour a little olive oil over your garlic. And I like to add just a little bit extra olive oil because that will give me some garlic flavored olive oil. And both of these are just popped into the oven and we just let them bake until you smell some wonderful garlic aromas. Okay, so it's been about an hour and our garlic has been roasting in the oven and the house smells fantastic. So I'm going to take both of our garlics out, the one that I wrapped in aluminum and the one I put in our little cast iron skillet. And we're gonna see which one performed the best. Now this is our garlic that was roasted in a little skillet. As you can see, in that one hour time, we got a lot of caramelization going on and they're gonna have a lot of flavor with this garlic. You don't want it to go too long because if you burn garlic, you get a bitter taste and we don't want our food tasting bitter. And this is our whole garlic bowl that we just wrapped in some aluminum foil. And as you can see, the top of this garlic is also nice and golden. The sides, nice and soft. So both of these garlics are actually good to go. Depending on how much flavor you want or what you're going to do with it, if you're going to do like a hummus, you probably don't want your garlic this dark. If you do, you're good to go. Have a good day. That was my culinary tip. I'm Chef Tish Hansel. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Hi, welcome back to Urban S. Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel, and like I said, today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious oven-baked soup. Yes, I said oven-baked, because we're not going to let the soup cook for hours on the stovetop. We're going to put it in the oven and make it kind of like a stew, but it's actually a soup. And so we're going to be using a cast iron pot which we can actually use on an induction cooktop. And so I'm just gonna turn this on and we're gonna put that at about 320 degrees and we're going to heat up our cast iron cook pot. I'm going to add some olive oil to the cook pot and let that heat up. Okay, so now we've added our olive oil to our cast iron pot and we're going to let it heat up just a little bit. We don't really need to let it heat up a lot, but you can kind of see that you can see a little smoke and olive oil actually heats very quickly. So I'm going to add our onions and these are chopped into a dice and it also has some celery. And both the onion and the celery are sliced very thinly because we want small pieces in our soup. You don't want a lot of big chunky pieces of onion or of the celery. So I'm going to toss this around in the olive oil to coat all of our vegetables. And this is our flavor base. So we're gonna let this caramelize for a second. Okay, so our vegetables have got a nice little caramelization going. And that really didn't take long. When you use an induction cooktop, your cooking time has been reduced quite substantially. The main thing is that you have to make sure that it doesn't burn because induction cooking Make sure that the heat goes from the unit to the pot and not on the surrounding surface. 
Now, one little thing that I really like to do to my things and my baked soups, because I'm not a, a, a vegetarian, I do like chicken, and I do like chicken flavor when I'm making my beans and peas. Now, this is an option. If you don't like to have meat in your beans or your peas, then you don't have to do this stuff. But because I do like chicken flavor, I am going to do this stuff. And I have a chicken leg that was left over from a previous meal. And this is a great way to add a little flavor to your food. Now you can add chicken stock, but I prefer to add the chicken itself because you have the bone, you have the skin, you have the meat. And that all combines to add a great chicken flavor. And so you don't want to do this before your vegetables have caramelized because it will slow down the caramelization process. So right now is a very good time to add this in because the juices from the chicken will also start to cook and you'll get some of that flavor in the food as well. So I'm just going to add that chicken thigh and that leg and I'm going to let this heat up a little bit. The chicken is already cooked so you really don't need to let it cook anymore. This is almost like when you have greens and you add a, a ham bone or if you add smoked chicken. This is adding that flavor. You don't necessarily have to eat the meat, but if you just like the meat flavor, like I do sometimes, I don't really like to eat the meat all the time, but I do like the meat flavor. And so I am going to let this warm up and I'm going to toss it around and I'm going to let that chicken flavor mix in with our onions and mix in with our celery. Now I haven't added the seasonings and spices to this just yet because I wanted to make sure that everything was caramelized and sometimes if you add your spices in too soon you might burn them and we don't want burnt spices. And this is actually a southern way to make beans where, you, where you're adding uh, the meat to it. So at this time, what I'm actually going to do is add our spices to this. And this is actually um, a spice mix that I like, which is a little bit of paprika, some cumin, which actually goes along with lentils because it's kind of it's a Middle Eastern spice. Uh, it's a Middle Eastern spice. And now we have rosemary, and this is some fresh rosemary that I got from the store today. And so I thought that that would add a wonderful flavor to it and actually just all smells wonderful. And I'm just going to let that toast and infuse. And actually this smells really terrific. I wish we had smell vision Okay, so one thing that I'm going to do today that is a little bit different is instead of adding water, I'm going to add a tomato stock. And that's because I like the tomato flavor and I don't want the water. Any liquid that you add to this is fine. If you want to add a chicken stock, that's fine. If you want to add a beef stock, whatever type of soup or stock that you would like to add, feel free to add that. Okay, so I've added my tomato stock and I've uh, stirred it in with the chicken and it's actually looking and smelling very good. Now what I want to do is bring this to a boil before I add my lentils because you don't want to add lentils to a cold liquid because it's going to make the skin tough. And if you do add any type of liquid to this, make sure it's warm because that will toughen the skin if you notice that your, your soup is lacking a little bit of liquid and you want to make it thicker, or thinner rather, and add some water that's warm. Don't add cold water. Okay, so now I have my chicken thigh and my leg in my broth and I'm going to let it simmer a little bit to let the flavors just kind of mix together before I add the lentils in. So I'm just gonna let this heat up a little bit. I'm going to cover it so that we don't lose any of our flavor. And once you start seeing a little steam come out, that means that it's ready for the lentils to go in. But one thing I do wanna show you about lentils. When you take them out of the bag, you have to clean them. Now you might think that they're clean coming out of the bag, but you want to make sure because sometimes these things have little tiny stones in them and take it from me you don't want to bite down on a stone that was in a bag so we're going to actually clean our lentils first okay now we've added our lentils to some water and we're just going to swish it around and when we're swishing it around what we're doing is we're cleaning off any type of dirt 
dessert that might be on the lentil, and we're also checking for small stones. Sometimes you actually can check for a small stone by putting them on a uh, on your tabletop or on a in a bowl, and you just kind of shift through it and make sure that there are no small stones in there because I've been down on a stone that was in some lentils before, and you really don't want to do that. So just make sure you take the precautionary measure of making sure that there are no stones in your lentil. Okay, so now once you put your lentils in the water, you're going to swish it around to make sure that they're clean. And you're going to notice that the water gets a little bit cloudy. And you're going to continue this process until the water is clear. So we're going to toss this water out and we're going to swish it around once more. And then we're going to strain the lentils and by that time, this should be steamed. Okay, so I've strained my water the first time and I'm going to do it again. Now, a tip that you might want to use if you're going to use a container like this in order to strain the water is get a little strainer like this or one that's bigger and you can just dump the whole thing in there. But that way you won't lose any of your lentils when you're pouring out the water in the sink. Okay, so. The lentils are strained and they're nice and clean and they are ready to add to our soup mixture. This actually smells wonderful. The chicken and the tomatoes and all the vegetables is a wonderful smell. I hope you try this at home. So now I'm going to add our lentils. And lentils actually don't take a long time to cook. So I'm going to make sure all of that's out. And in a previous show, I actually showed you how to do some roasted garlic. And this is actually a perfect opportunity to use that roasted garlic because you'll have a nice, robust flavor in your soup. And people will wonder how you got that wonderful roasted flavor in a baked soup. So we're just going to stir all of that in. And we're just going to cover this. And we're going to turn up our induction cooktop and we're going to place the entire pot in the oven and let it cook. And this should take less than one hour to be ready for your soup. Okay, stay tuned and our oven roasted soup should be ready to go shortly. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hi, welcome back. Now, it's been almost an hour, and our lentil soup has baked in our oven and it's just about ready. So let's take it out and see how it's doing. Cast iron is very hot. You don't want to burn your hands. So remember to use your oven mitts. Our oven baked soup is a success. Our lentils are nice and tender. They have an essence of our baked chicken that I added into it. You can either keep the chicken or you can disregard it, but it's delicious as well. And you put that in a bowl with some cornbread or some rice and you've got a meal. flavor of chicken. I can taste that roasted garlic that's in here that I made last week. If you need to see how to roast garlic, check out the previous show that said roasting garlic in your oven. You get that tomato flavor and you definitely taste that cumin that I added. Try this at home. You'll definitely enjoy it. If you have any questions, contact me on Facebook. This has been Chef Tish Tanso on Urban Esque Living. Have a good day. These come in all sizes and shapes. Sometimes your friends are your family by choice. 
or sometimes you're just stuck with Uncle Charles. But what we know is that you want to protect the people that are close to you. But the flu can unravel everything. Your flu vaccine protects you and your family. No matter what draws your family together, protect yourself, protect your family. Everyone needs a flu vaccine. Chef Tish Tanzel and this is Urban S Living and today I'm going to show you how to make your salads taste like those fancy salads you get in the upscale restaurants you know the ones that have the fancy nuts well today I'm going to show you how to make some of those fancy nuts that you can garnish your salads with today we are making rosemary pecans today I'm going to show you how to make rosemary pecans and of course the two most vital ingredients to rosemary pecans are pecans and rosemary. Now I went to the store and found some organic rosemary. If you grow some in your own home garden, that's perfectly fine also. But the first thing that you have to do to the rosemary is to get these little leaves off of the stalk. And that's very easy. You just take it, peel them back, and they come off very easily. Now, depending upon how much rosemary you, you like, you might like a little flavor, you might like a lot of flavor. Because we're not doing a great deal of pecans, we really don't need a lot, but I'm doing these for my mom who loves rosemary. So I'm adding just a little bit of extra rosemary just for her. Now, you don't really have to cut these rosemary petals up because we are going to actually infuse our brown sugar. Part of making the rosemary pecans is to make a glaze. And the glaze is made with brown sugar, butter, and some spices. So what we want to do first of all is turn on our induction cooktop. And, okay, so our induction cooktop is on at about 280 degrees. And we're going to use butter because butter is so luscious. And like I said, these rosemary pecans are a gift to my mother. So we want to make sure that uh, we meet her taste specifications. If I was doing this for myself, I would probably use some type of oil. But because I'm giving these as a gift, I want to really have a, a very good, luscious flavor. So I'm going to melt about a stick of butter and milk. So while the butter is melting, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with our rosemary and brown sugar. Because we want to infuse the flavor. I have a small food processor. So I'm just going to add the rosemary leaves in here. And I'm going to take my brown sugar and I'm going to add a little bit of the brown sugar in here as well. Okay, so we're just going to toss the butter around because we don't really want it to burn. But actually brown butter is very good. It has a lot of great flavor. But we are going to be sticking our pecans in the oven. So that's actually going to give us some great flavor as well. So we have our brown sugar and our rosemary in our food processor and we're just going to pulse it. Okay, now that I have our brown sugar and our rosemary pretty well browned up, I'm going to add our spices. And I have vanilla bean, about a teaspoon of vanilla bean, about a teaspoon of brown cinnamon, and a little kosher salt. Now you can add sea salt, you can add uh, some of the flavored salts that they have out now. Some salt actually has a vanilla flavor, so you can add that. So I'm just going to blend this all together. I'm going to stir our butter a little bit. It actually has a nice brown caramelized color to it and it's perfect for our brown sugar. So I'm going to add the remainder of the brown sugar that we didn't grind up with our spices. And I'm going to add the brown sugar also. And I'm just going to stir this. Now, if you have a candy thermometer, you can use that, but it's really not necessary. You can really tell when it's at the right point because it's at a, a, a caramely stage. Now, the beautiful thing about cooking with cast iron is that it has a lot of times a natural non-stick finish. So you don't have to worry about all this sugar sticking to your pan that you have to get off later on. I'm going to turn 
are soft now. And I'm going to bring in our pecans. Now, this is not hot, but I'm still going to use one of our other bits. We like to practice kitchen safety. And this is one of our silicone oven mitts that's great for handling hot pots such as this. All right, great. Our rosemary pecans now are nice and glazed over. So what I'm going to do in order to complete the process and let them dry is I'm going to put them on a sheet tray and I'm going to put them in the oven and let them roast a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to spread them out on our sheet tray and I'm going to put these in the oven. And we're just going to toss them about every 15 minutes. Gaining weight was easy. All I had to do was sit down and eat. Losing weight's a lot harder. I have to work at it every day. But with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step, every choice, every day. Very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes by losing weight, eating healthy, and staying active. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Welcome back to Urban S. Living. The house smells wonderful, full of rosemary and roasted nuts. Let's take them out of the oven now because they don't take long to glaze. Our rosemary pecans are nice and shiny. They have a wonderful aroma. Once they cool off a little bit, I'm going to taste them. But these are very easy to make. You just need some rosemary, preferably fresh rosemary some brown sugar, but you can use white if you prefer them to be a little lighter. And you just need a, a, a silicone mat in order to stick them into the oven. But if you don't have a silicone mat, you can use a non-stick spray as well. It's all good as long as you make sure that it's urban-esque. Thank you for joining me.